Hello everyone and happy feast day today, the day of the Holy Cross, the eve of Theophany, Theophany, the baptism of our Lord. I just wanted to share with you uh, what one should have at or on their home altar. Just like at church we have an altar, um, at home we have one as well. And this is what I learned, not because I'm a priest, but because that's what's been passed down from my grandfather to my father and then to me. And I want to share it with you uh, as well. This is my home altar and it's a little different, but it just has one piece to it that's different from everyone else's. And that's only because I'm a priest and that one piece is the Epitrahelion that I uh, put on as a priest. But other than that, if I wasn't a priest, that's one thing I wouldn't have, but all these other things I would have. So let's begin with the uh, setup of the uh, icons. Right in the center of, of the icon corner or the home altar is the icon of Christ. Now, some people choose to have a, a patron saint in that uh, spot there and I could go into the reason why that's so but I'm just going to go um, with what's traditional now um, in the Orthodox for Orthodox Christians so the center icon is the icon of uh, Christ uh, right under the icon of Christ I have the icon of the Virgin Mary um, this is uh, also very important to have on your icon corner <coughs> And then to the right of Christ, which is my left, um, the camera's flipped, so everything's gonna be, I think, flipped right now, but to the right of Christ is the icon of my patron saint, Saint George, the patron saint of my home. If you don't have a patron saint, then that would probably be the place of uh, your name uh, saint, the saint whose name you are carrying. And then uh, right next to that icon, I also chose, even though it's not in uh, Serbian tradition, to have my wife's patron, my wife's Slava or patron saint, Saint Archangel uh, Michael. On the other side, we simply put icons which are uh, meaningful to us and to our family. This icon is icon of Saint Raletina. Uh, I was healed at that monastery when I was. Um, nine, eight or nine years old, many, many years ago. Um, and therefore I commissioned an icon uh, from that monastery a few years ago to remind me of that healing. And the healing was significant because um, without going into too much detail, um, there was a very good chance that I wasn't supposed to uh, live here and now any longer at that time. <laughs> But I was healed uh, at that monastery, and that reminds me of that. And then we have the icon of Saint Petka Paraskeva, which we acquired at um, one of the monasteries, one of the holiest monasteries in Montenegro or Tsarnagora, um, at Monastery of Ostrog. So that's a very meaningful icon uh, to us. That's as far as the icons are concerned. We also have obviously a few more icons which we have added. As an icon of Saint Nectarios, um, who is the patron saint of those who are sick, specifically those who are sick with cancer. And we like to think of people who are struggling with this horrible illness and ask him to, to pray to God for us and help us all. Um, an icon of Saint Nicholas, the patron of our community, reminds us of the church that we are part of. Um, then obviously over here we have an icon of Saint um, Sava, um, who is the patron saint of the Serbian, the whole Serbian church, and the founder of the Serbian church, if you will. Um, and then in addition to those icons, we have one icon that we just gave away, and that was an icon that we brought into our home recently of Saint Mardarie, who is the patron saint of the Midwest Diocese. Um, uh, his relics are at the Monastery of St. Sava in Libertyville, uh, Illinois. Now, um, 
We do have a couple of other icons which you can't see. I'll bring you up closer in just a little bit so that you can view it as well. But there's an icon of a um, Greek priest from California who was martyred. Um, I, for some reason, without going into too much details, I have a connection to this saint and I've had it for a long time now and his icon is here uh, as well. Um, then there are some pictures that I will go into explaining. One of them is a picture of a very holy elder who I very much respect and love, um, Elder Ephraim. <laughs> uh, then there is a picture of our children to remind us of them so that we could pray for them. Um, and then there's also a picture of my grandfather's brother who as a young man was sent to a consecration camp um, by the Nazis and was killed there during World War II. Um, I remember learning about him as a child and um, he always remained in my, in my mind and we have him here as well as, as, a, as a boy who was taken basically from his family back in the day. Uh, we have the branch from the Yule Log which represents bringing Christ into the home. Um, and then I'll explain um, one uh, piece uh, by another. In the center of our altar, not on the wall, but this part here, um, we have the gospel, um, as you can see here. And then right under the gospel is the uh, epitrahelion that I was talking to you about. This epitrahelion especially, it's a very old epitrahelion, as you can see. Um, uh, it belongs to, or it belonged, when my father was a priest in Serbia, it belonged to him uh, many, many years ago. So it's a very old piece of vestment that connects me to uh, my father and his priesthood. And I have that uh, here as well. Then over that is the gospel, just like in church. And over that is an image of uh, the uncreated image of Christ, which I received from the Holy Land, from one of the parishioners. Uh, I have that covering the gospel. And then on top of that, I have a cross, which was given to me by a very good friend, who now is a, is a monk, uh, abbot of one of the monasteries. Um, and this cross, I use to bless my family when we uh, pray. And I, you're, I'm not the only one who can use it, by the way, the head of your family can have a cross to bless the family after prayer uh, as well, just like this, and everyone comes and, and uh, venerates the cross. Now, what else do I have on the altar table? Um, I have holy oil for anointing, and this holy oil was the oil that was blessed actually when our home was blessed, um, and your home, I'm, I assume, is blessed as well. Not sprinkled with holy water, but sanctified, just like the church. Every home should be sanctified. And that's when the priest comes and he anoints the home with holy oil on all four sides and also senses the home and blesses the home with holy water and reads many prayers, almost like, a, like sanctifying a church. So we have that for anointing if we're, if we're sick during the week or at any time. We also have special oil that we received from St. John of Shanghai of San Francisco, uh, healing oil that I can use for us at home or for anyone else that I go and take to, and you could use it yourself as well. And uh, this is holy oil from St. George, the patron saint. This oil comes out of his grave, uh, believe it or not. And uh, it's the oil that we also use for anointing. In addition to that, I also have dried dry church bread. Um, we cut up in little pieces, like you could see here, and we dry it up. Um, in case we are not able to go to church, um, we can soften it and partake of it as a blessing uh, to us. And um, then on the other side, we have, uh, yes, we have holy water. This opens up and we drink holy water from here um, whenever, um, whenever we need to, for that matter. It should be done every day, a little sip or three sips, if you will. 
Um, now, this is something that we started doing um, at, the, at the beginning of the pandemic. I even put holy water into this during the, uh, during the pandemic. Now, I do also want to say we don't have that on our, on, our, um, on our icon corner because I have a library back here. But one should also have the Orthodox Study Bible, which is truly one of the best Bibles to have right now. Not that we can't read any other Bible, but this one's good because it explains things on the bottom as well so that we can properly understand the Bible. And the explanations are done not just by anyone, but by holy people of our church. Um, which is important. Okay, what else is there? Um, I'll go from here. Um, there are two things here. One is the pocket calendar, which tells us which feast day we celebrate each day, what saints we ask to pray to God for us. Every day has saints. And then this little booklet has names of people we remember in prayer, uh, mostly our family and friends, acquaintances. Um, as a priest, I also have um, an additional um, uh, prayer uh, list like this um, that I put people who are presently sick in the parish and remember in prayer. And then at the head of this, this is something that I learned myself. I don't know if you could read it, but at the head of it, it says, today you will die. Just to remind me that I'm mortal. So I don't think that, you know, because when we, when we, are reminded that we will die, then we think of where we're going. And it kind of grounds us and it gives us a good start of the day, if you will. They say that the best way to live the life is to start off the day by uh, imagining that at night you will die. So make the best of it. And that's how then we should treat God and each other and prepare for the kingdom of heaven. Not to be desperate because of it, but just to live the life the way that we should as Orthodox Christians. Um, now, right here on this side, I didn't show you, I have two sensors, and you don't have to have two, but I, I, I do. I have a, a sensor that I use for Sundays and big feast days. And then I also have a sensor um, that I use uh, during the week or for holy days. It's a hand sensor. I make the sign of the cross like this and go around the whole house, incensing icons in every corner of the house, blessing it with uh, incense. Um, in addition to the vigil lamp, which burns at the main icon, um, and we light that on Sundays and feast days. During this pandemic, we've actually lit it every day, um, and maybe it should be lit every day for that matter. But then that's for big feast days like today and tomorrow. But then for, because they are Christ related feast days. But then for holy people, I have a small um, vigil lamp that stands like this that, I, that we light for holy days, like for holy people uh, during the week. Uh, we light that in their uh, honor, if you will. Um, and you see how everything here is set up in a way that it's, um, it's uh, very safe. Like this will not, God forbid, if something lights up. So we don't just light a candle and let it burn. In the, in the rooms, we do have candles that we light, but the candles are in a cup that's filled with sand, just like at the church. So when we light the candle, if we forget to extinguish it, it burns down and it's safe. So you want to, you know, God gave us a brain and we need to obviously use it and, and not tempt God by saying, it. well, God will take care of it. No, it's our responsibility. So that's <clears throat> that side. This side, there are a couple of more things I wanted to show you here. One is um, we have the stewardship card from our church um, that unfortunately we didn't fill out yet. We should have, um, but we also like to keep one of these stewardship cards right on the altar, on our home altar, just to remind us that we should give to church regularly, both uh, monetarily, uh, but also in talent and um, in, uh, in time. And it's just a helpful reminder. I actually saw that in, in homes of our parish and I, and I took on that uh, practice uh, myself. 
And then uh, at last here, uh, we have uh, different prayer books. Uh, prayer book um, in Serbian. We have prayer book in English. My wife and I prefer the, the prayers in, in Serbian. That's our first language. My children, um, our children, and maybe guests or people would prefer it um, in English, obviously. Uh, and then we have the book of Psalms, which can be read anytime during the day. Um, and then um, at the back of it, we have a much thicker uh, prayer book with many more prayers, which were composed by holy people that you could use at any time. Now, don't think that just because I'm showing you these prayers and all of these things that uh, I'm praying all these prayers or I'm uh, special because of these prayers or no. I also struggle with praying just like anyone else out there. Uh, so there are days that we don't pray. There are days that we do. There are uh, months that we skip certain prayers or certain uh, things that we should do. We mess up constantly. But the main thing is that we're set up so that we can always get back uh, to it. And I hope and pray um, that this little um, video uh, gives you the strength to put together your icon corner. And one thing that I missed, obviously, is this little thing. And this is uh, simply filled with incense. It's in a nice little box. We want to make sure we keep our altars neat, just like the, the church. But my point is, set your altar up at home and then do your best to pray, because that's the only thing I do. Um, I'm being a priest, I do have to do certain prayers. Um, but again, a lot of times uh, it's mechanical. But if I don't do it mechanically, I won't be able to feel it, if you know what I mean, uh, if I don't do prayers at all. My hope is to do my prayers as much and, and the best that I can, and then hope uh, to feel it as much as possible. Uh, and there are times when I would do a whole bunch of prayers and not feel anything. And then I'm doing something in my, in my living room. I work from home mostly lately, especially. And then something pops up. I stand in front of the icon corner, say a few words. Um, all kinds of emotions start going around. And it's better than praying five days, you know. So with prayer, it's, it's up and down. But the main thing is that we're set up that we are reminded and that we come back to it all the time. God bless and keep you and stay well. Happy feast day.